the team, um, Colin, prior to that, you were working directly with some of our partners who were experiencing exactly the kind of problems that we set out to, to solve. Um, do you want to talk a little about your experiences? Yeah, so uh, when I first joined Palantir more than three years ago, uh, I joined as a deployment strategist. Uh, and essentially my role is to in charge of figuring out how do we deploy our software at different partners such that they can make the most out of the data. Uh, and I work across industry, for example, in energy, supply chain manufacturing, across a huge variation of industries. Uh, and Despite all of the uh, business operations could be quite different, um, I started true. seeing a lot of similar patterns in terms of data integration. True, For true. example, customer will always want to integrate similar ERP systems, CRM system uh, per se. Everyone uses and the same stuff. I think that was like almost two years ago when we uh, met in New York and talking about the most pressing business problems. And then you started sharing with me uh, some of the vision and mission uh, related to Palantir mm. Hyper Auto and software defined data integration. Uh, and I think, as you explained to me, I was pretty much hooked because uh, I think that exactly aligned with what is um, the repetitiveness of the work that we're doing uh, on the field. And so that's why oh. I joined the team and Video wanting to really encapsulate all of these field learnings uh, into our product. And actually, I remember um, two years ago when we talk about um, the product, et cetera, um, I remember you started off solving the problem purely for SAP ERP systems, right? That, yeah, that's mm -hmm. absolutely right. So, and in fact, in a minute, I'm going to walk through a demo of Panty mm. Hyper Auto, and I'm gonna focus on, on SAP ERP. I'm gonna stop this for a second. Here's the thing. In my honest opinion, my opinion, a lot of the stuff they're talking about is kind of fluffy, to be very honest with you. And I think there's a reason for it. They're not going too much into detail. Now, they're going to show us systems, but that's mainly front end, guys. Okay, this is not back end. Um, I think the reason they're doing that is because, like I mentioned, the principles that they're talking about, most of them are kind of obvious. Um, I think what's happening here, and we'll, go, we'll see once we actually take a look at the software, but I think what's happening here is there's lots of this stuff already existing in the marketplace, right? Um, and of course, full disclosure, I'm a full Palantir investor. It's not like I'm trying to drag down or prop up the company. I just want to know what it is, right? But there's stuff like this already existing. The thing is, I think these guys have figured out a way to take all of the low hanging fruit from all of the different trees and make a fruit salad. <laughs> I think they found a way to make that and put that all into one platform, which could be huge actually. So. And like I mentioned before, the reason why people have not done this is because each individual part of the pipeline is like certain companies are better at doing that. Like Microsoft is better at doing one part. Um, you know, some other CRM or, you know, ERP platform is doing better, SAP, whatever, is better at doing another part. So people are like, you know what? That's not their main line of business. The other main line of business is something else. So whatever. But then Palantir with the Hyper Auto, Hyper Auto seems like they're realize that and they're like well instead of this being their secondary product we'll just make it all the low-hanging fruit as one massive offering in one platform and push that as, as a major product um it could be big this could be really big but at the same time it could also be really easy because there's this this already exists right so let's see how efficient how good they are at, at having this combined into one uh, it's a system which is ubiquitous. We, we've uh, encountered it with many of our partners, and we know that it uh, it powers you know, large organizations, but also that the data in there is, is valuable, and putting that into analytical tool sets is, is really important. Um, but having started from that, that point and proven uh, this principle there, we have now um, implemented Palantir Hyper Auto for a number of Salesforce products, for um, Oracle NetSuite, for okay. um, Microsoft SQL Server, for Google BigQuery, and we're continuing to expand on that okay. list okay. Um, by the week. So really pushing the boundaries of what we can do with Palantir Hyper Auto. 
Yeah, so we're very excited to uh, pushing more and more uh, support to different um, sources. I think uh, we talk about quite a lot of um, the products, guiding principle, and as well as like the story of how both of us um, joined the team. Um, I think it will actually be great if we can contextualize a lot of the things that we talk about uh, via a quick demo. Uh, and before we jump into the demo, uh, I just All also right, want to encourage folks, if you have questions, please drop them into the comment session uh, as well. So Tom, I think you're ready. So do you want to go ahead for the demo? Yeah, yeah I hope for so. Um, yeah, hoping that there aren't any more technical glitches. You can all see what I've just put up on the screen here. Um, so again, just to stress, I'm going to demo through the lens of an SAP really ERP system. Um, however, we've implemented uh, Ooh, SAP Porto ERP for, a, for a number okay. of ERP, CRM, and other common enterprise data systems. Um, but here we're going to look at um, an SAP ERP system to understand how powerful this can be in really just sort of eliminating those complex data pipeline projects. Um, so in front of you at the moment, we are trying to discover the data. We're, we're assuming we've already connected to a source. We have a number of out-of-the-box connectors for a large number of different data systems. So we've connected here to an SAP ERP system. And what we'd like to do is find the relevant data to put together a representation oh, of a material. No problem. So something which we are either manufacturing or something we're purchasing or something that we're gonna sell. And doing that can actually sometimes be a bit of a needle in a haystack exercise because the data is hidden away, it's, it's given names which are sometimes a little bit cryptic. They're certainly not something that's gonna be familiar to a non-expert in this system. But in our Source Explorer, which is the first entry point of Palantir Hyper Auto, we can just jump into different modules. So for example, looking at things grouped by materials have or to be like a by four finances or by project systems. So if I look inside the uh, material management module, I can basically find all of the tables, which as you can see, have got these sort of four character names, which I wouldn't necessarily have known. Um, and I can add all of those to my workspace. Right? And now I can look at one of those. So I'm gonna look at the master material table here, um, which is called Mara. And I get a quick preview of the data, so I can make sure the data I was expecting. Plus, I can see all of the column headers going across the top here. Um, and these have been given descriptive names, so they haven't just got these five characters anymore, these sort of cryptic names. Okay. We've actually got some descriptive names for the columns, so we understand what they're meaning. But most importantly of all, what Palantir Hyper Auto is doing for us is it's finding the relationships. So over on the right-hand side of the screen here, I'm looking at the relationships. And also, the, the lines between the boxes on my screen are showing me the relationships between the different tables in the source database. Um, but if I wanted to find, for example, who's selling me this material, then I can just start searching for vendor. I don't need to know that the vendor master table is called in its encoded name LFA1. I'm just searching in a human-centric way for vendor. And I can add that here, too. Um, and I can have a quick preview of that. Yep, I've got a list of the, my vendors here, so that makes sense to me. Once I've gathered all the data that I'm interested in, this is being added to a, a shopping cart, if you like. And then when I'm ready, I can check out by hitting this button that tells me to configure my sinks. And what that gives me, ultimately, is a data pipeline. So I'm going to flip views a little bit here, and I'm now going to look at what we call a data lineage graph. So in front of you, you see the flow of the data, and the boxes on the screen represent um, data tables, or on the far right of my screen here, objects, so a human-centric object model of the world. And the lines that go between these represent the transformations of the data, transforming it from um, its raw state on the far left. Okay, okay. Just real quick. there's stuff out there that does exactly this okay the thing is it doesn't do it all together in one platform do you know what i mean it um, actually let me show you for a second so this is directly competing with something like basically what i'm going to show you is ssas and ssis it's a microsoft built-in system um for things like big data so let me show you right now real quick look at this thing i just google image i just google google whatever it is right look see that so this is right it's it's a it's it's offered from microsoft in many cases actually offered kind of like for a very low cost all the versions can be free um you know you click on stuff it's, it's very similar but it looks like a piece of shit, right that's kind of the point like other companies that do this kind of stuff 
it's almost like their secondary offering so they don't focus too much on trying to make it all like crazy looking amazing right there is one company though let me show you um it's apache airflow check this out so look at that man so dags and uh come on load jesus get this image proper I need to show my people come on there look at that so apache airflow is very very similar to what palantir is doing right now with this so all the stuff i'm telling you guys look into it like i mentioned before like these guys have made a good platform where you can pick what you want you can press go shopping card right so they made it almost like gamifying for analysts this is very catered to analysts i know for a fact if analysts and i've worked with analysts if they get this kind of stuff they're gonna love it now i personally think the complexity from an enterprise level is not too tricky like i feel like microsoft and and uh, you know sap if they really really wanted to they can probably stick together an engineering team and, and tackle this kind of thing but the what matters here is the speed i know that ssis and ssas usually are very slow okay they're like very very slow um and they're predefined so you have to define a bunch of stuff in advance or else the entire pipeline is kaput okay so um there's quirks to it but if we're just talking about the functionality part of it palantir seems to have made certain parts of it easy which is very important remember because we're talking about analysts that aren't technical talking to people that are very technical um so when you bridge the gap it's worth more than you guys think even though the technical solution is not that not that hard to overcome right um so you know just keep that in mind here I'm not fully buying it just yet because I know that the problem is not too, too difficult to solve. If certain companies just decided to throw money at it, maybe it could work. But uh, but to be honest, I'm on the fence. Because the other side of it is, why haven't they done that already? One, um, and I've worked with systems like this and it's actually quite difficult to do what they're talking about. Two, and three, you know, to develop some kind of UI like this that actually makes it easier for analysts to pick up quite hard quite hard i can tell you that from a very very personal experience i know that for a fact it's very hard um anyway let's continue left of the page here all the way through to this much more usable state at the other end yeah and at the beginning of this pipeline we have the source erp system then we map through raw data then using the metadata all we dynamically generate the pipeline so i'm going to go back and just stress this point around automation which i mentioned when we we're talking about our guiding philosophies so this piece of the pipeline here, everything in pale green in the middle of my screen okay. is automatically and dynamically generated. So no code had to be written to do that. And that's being done because we're introspecting mm -hmm. okay, the metadata okay. about the source system. So, so this is the part I was talking about where the analysts come in and actually provide you with like some kind of schema. Um, this is, I guess, where the business defined third principle that they're talking about comes into play. Um, this would shave on a, on a regular scope depending on how big your data set is and what your final goal is, maybe like a whole week worth of work. So what's that worth to you, right? Uh, when I was working in a system like this, um, you know, we charge hourly, right? Like for all the consultants charge hourly. So, I mean, you're talking like at least like 50 grand in a week, right? So depending on how big your team and stuff is. So what is this worth to a company? It's very, actually very valuable, but I'm not sure, um, you know, some folks might have bigger data sets where this is more important. The bigger, bigger part is they're making certain assumptions. Okay. So they're making certain assumptions to make this model here in the middle. Um, like he's saying, you see they're introspective, right? The question is now going to be the companies that are leveraging this product. Are they willing to accept these introspectives and what kind of modeling is behind it? Now, if they tied some kind of machine learning to this, it's pretty much game over because all they need to do is have a few issues, correct those issues and then learn based on that, right? You have like a like a huge epoch set, which is basically the amount of time you're training it, like a single model. Um, then you have an algorithm that can generate these kind of uh, introspective stuff very, very fast, right? So it's basically, you have like an analyst thinking for you. You don't need to go and talk to anybody, right? Um, anyway. All right, guys, that's it. That concludes this part. Uh, I guess I'll check you out in the next one. Catch you later. Peace.